military survival training, given a 48 hour scenario survival strategy. So we're gonna go down the list of basic skills and then look at some unique skills toward the end of the video for military purposes. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Hey troops, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan, I'm a former Marine from the United Kingdom. And um, today we're gonna to get reacting to basic military survival skills. This is a 48 hour survival uh, priority video it looks really really good original link will be in the description and uh yeah troops smash that like button sub subscribe and share and comment and everything you want guys and uh if you're a hater like i had one or two guys on instagram then uh yeah continue to watch even more to get this good training now without further ado let's go I think this guy is a ranger though, isn't he? Now one of our first priorities, besides medical aid and treating a casualty, is gonna be shelter. Getting that shelter erected quickly is incredibly important. Now, the reason it is important, especially in a military survival scenario, is that we create a space that is dry out of the elements, blended into our surroundings and camouflage to where we can get some rest, recuperate, maintain security, and think about our next survival task along our survival priorities, which is why shelter is gonna be one of the first things that we put up depending on the survival situation. I'm glad he said that. So depending on the survival situation, what he means by that is shelter, if it's, just imagine the scenario, it's smashing it down in rain, it's cold, you already have water on you, you might have a little bit of food. Yeah, your priority to get a shelter up is gonna take uh, present, okay? If you were in an environment where it was red hot, red hot, and you had a cap on, for instance, and you really needed water, guess what the first priority is? It's getting water. So it, it does depend. I'm glad he said that. In our immediate needs. But we have a wide array of materials that are very lightweight and portable to make our shelter. We have our poncho or a tarp, a drum liner, our grabber space blanket, which we also use as a casualty blanket to treat casualties that have lost blood and their body temperature has decreased as a result. We also have 550 cord. We have What's that, K-Tac cookery? That, that looks like a naughty knife, that does. We have zip ties, and we have ground stakes, as well as bungee cords to erect a simple shelter and creating a roof, protecting ourselves from the elements to climb underneath and stay warm and dry and rest for a survival situation. But shelter is going to be our first priority. Notice how he's keeping it really low to the ground as well, because he's talking in a military context, it's a survival priority, so you don't want to be seen. You've got to be thinking about the the you know the priorities of the um, environment in which he's in. He might be being chased by enemy or anything like that, so that's why this uh, shelter in particular might not be the most comfortablest, okay, but it's going to be the most effective. And that's pretty hard to see. So it ticks the box straight away. Almost as equally important as shelter is going to be water. Having the ability to treat water, make it safe to drink or purify it, and then being able to transport water as well, or being able to drink it on demand through some sort of filter is important for military survival. Water is going to be our second priority because we can only go so long without water, especially if we are wounded and we have lost blood, and especially in a hot, humid climate like the one we're in today. Yeah. And so for a basic water kit, we're going to have our canteen and our metal nesting cup or canteen cup, as well as aqua tablets or iodine tablets or some sort of chemical treatment for our water, as well as a filter and a straw for our water. We can take that filter and simply put the surgical tubing on the end and drink it straight from the swamp, or we can find a plastic bottle because there's trash. Right, so you don't see this often, guys, but I have seen one or two individuals, uh, predominantly military survivalists, do this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it, it'll work. It'll, <laughs> it'll work for a period of time, but... Um, Look, it's a survival situation, let's remember that. But if you're doing you don't want to be doing this just, you know, going for a walk, taking this and then drinking from swamps, guys, you're gonna get pretty ill, okay? Uh yeah, but survival situation, it's a neat thing, it's gonna save your life. But unless you wanna be um shitting, you know, 
for weeks on end, then this is not recommended for, for long periods of time, okay? Everywhere nowadays, and attach our filter to that bottle and drink straight from the water we picked up in that bottle from the swamp. But water is gonna be incredibly important for survival to maintain cellular function and coherency and stay alive yeah. in a survival situation. Right, his ears look pretty messed up. He must be a fighter of some sort. One hard B it, and then you know the rest. Ends in tid. For our third prize. I've got one of those, I think. Priority in our 48 hour survival scenario, at least for the first day, fire is gonna be one of those tasks for survival. Having a good fire kit makes all the difference out in the wild to get a fire going. Fire does everything for us. Fire can cook our meals, purify our water. Fire start and tinder. So this is a kit that he's, um, that he's got. It's, this is a pretty handy thing to have, guys. Water, signal, keep us warm at night, and is a psychological boost, especially in the dark jungle. But we can have a wide array of fire lighting devices in our kit to get fire going in any situation. We can have man-made tinder like cotton balls and Vaseline. Our cotton balls and Vaseline is such a good bit of kit, guys. Honestly, life-saving. Aviator spark light, wet fire, which will light in rain. Our ferro rod matches with a wide variety of matches inside our match case and a small ferro on the bottom of that to start fires. A thick lighter with tape with the button secured. And then a Fresnel lens that we can use to use the sun's rays to get a fire going. And of course, if you're a fan of the channel, then you would have seen the last video where we use improvised methods from our military kit to get fire going, either using the sun's rays, wow. using gunpowder, using items from our medical kit, using parabolic lenses, or things from our survival tin to get that survival fire going, to get ourselves warm, get our water treated, get food cooked, and signal for rescue. So we have a lot of items at our disposal. Nice, man. This dude seems to know exactly what he's talking about. Signaling is our fourth and last priority for the first 24 hour of our survival scenario. So for the first day, we're focused on shelter, water, fire, and signaling for rescue. With our signaling kit, it's very small and compact, can fit in a quart size bag or in our backpack, or we can take these items and cross load them in our pockets. But our signaling kit needs to have items for both day and night, active and passive signals, meaning that active we are constantly using them and that we operate them manually, as well as passive signals that we can set and forget while it signals for rescue for us if need be. But our survival signals, small enough like this, we should take out. Was that like an aviation signal, I think? That's the signal for planes and stuff who's uh, potentially flying overhead. I think this is something that um, you wouldn't necessarily be carrying um, on an individual basis. If you knew you were going into an environment, especially in terms of operational environment, this is probably like a section, um, section kit, okay? Uh, I don't think every individual would carry all of these items anyway. Now, there's one thing that I would carry as an individual. Everyone would have some form of survival kit. And in that kit would have the basic amenities to uh, start a fire, to um, set traps, to fish, um, to clean and hydrate water, uh, to clean water, okay, basic things like that. These bigger items is um, not necessarily an individual item that you take everywhere with you, although it would be good practice. It's just, there's a lot of it really. But uh, yeah, definitely within a section, you would like to have some of this stuff. And place in our pockets to at least have several of those signals on our person, ready to go the moment we hear a rescue helicopter or rescue inbound to signal them and draw them into our position. Now with our first 24 hours. Sorry guys, I didn't realize I didn't have it on. Of our 48 hour survival scenario complete, we can start focusing on other tasks now that we have shelter, fire, water, and signaling set up. With our kit or a wide array of tools that we can now craft things from the landscape and start providing for our basic needs in survival. Nice. As part of our tools or creating tools from the landscape, things we need to survive and creating those things from the materials around us, such as a frog gig to go after frogs 
or a hobo reel to go after fish and attempt to catch some game in the immediate area. We can also use our tools, our machete, our knife, our saw, multi-tool, even our sewing kit, 550 cord, and 100 mile an hour tape to create weapons from the landscape. Weapons are gonna be one of our priorities among tools because we need to provide for our own defense and the defense of our group. One of my favorites is creating a simple club, a mohawk style club. We find a tree with an acceptable branch offshoot that can act as a handle and cut it to length, giving us a club at one end with a long handle. We can take out our kukri or our machete and simply form the head of that club into a rounded end. Yeah, it's gonna kill you. To act as the club itself or a weighted end, test it on the ground to make sure it works, and then we have an effective club. One other thing we can do is simply take a nail from our survival kit or our hunting kit, a longer nail, sharpen the tip, hammer that tip through the head of our club, giving us a spear point on that club to increase the damage that club can do. Yeah, that's a naughty bit of kit. In melee combat, up close against a predator or an enemy force. That nail we can lash in place with 550 cord or whatever we have available. We could also add a tip on the end for blunt striking at close range. And now we have a club or a melee weapon for close range combat to defend ourselves or the members of our group in a survival situation. After completing tools, recreating things from the landscape to go after game or provide for our survival needs, as well as building weapons to help defend ourselves in our immediate area and help protect our group. Our next survival priority can be establishing traps or snares to go after game and passively hunt game in the area. That knife that he's got is awesome, man. It's like a, like a knife slash ax. Really, really handy bit of kit that I want one. The entire point of the 48 hour survival scenario is to teach the skills necessary to provide for immediate survival needs and then looking at the area we found ourselves in in an isolating event, explore beyond our immediate area in survival shelter to begin building a association with the terrain and then understanding the terrain and the resources available. One of the things we can do is start to begin building passive traps to go after a game in the area. Once we gain more knowledge of the area and understand the animals in the area, identify game trails and potential game in the area from their droppings or their tracks, we can establish traps. One of the passive traps we can use is just a simple snare. funnel snare. We can use our saw, our machete, and our knife to split logs and create stakes, hammer those stakes into the ground, creating a funnel or hourglass shape, create our snare from a wire from our survival kit, creating a self-locking snare, attaching that to a stake and placing it in the center of our funnel. We grab debris from the surrounding area and camouflage that funnel, creating that trap the animal will go through along that game trail and then set up our snare and then continuously check that snare for game. Yeah, these things are pretty hard uh, to um, actually get to work. I've, um, I've used these in the past in certain situations, um, not a survival situation, but you know, tried and tested loads of these things out. And it depends on the environment in which you're at. So in the UK, you know, you're looking at rabbits and hares and things like that, but not much else. There's nothing, there's not a lot of wildlife in Britain, um, believe it or not. There is, and you can be successful, but certain places in the States and Canada, yeah, I can see why these would be even more useful. But uh, pretty good knowledge to have uh, to understand how to actually use these things and make them anywhere. After we have tools built, weapons built or created, and then have established snares or in the process of establishing snares, our next survival priority in our second day of our 48 hour survival scenario are gonna be things called path guards, or in other words, booby traps. Path guards, as we call them, are used along avenues of approach, along trails or roads on spurs or paths of least resistance that people will travel through the terrain as we gain a better knowledge of the terrain that we're in. 
we place those traps or those path guards out to prevent personnel from walking up on our position unannounced, either as anti-personnel devices or as early detection devices to give ourselves enough time to react to enemy presence or unknown presence in the area, either packing up camp or escaping and evading quickly to get out of that situation. One of the traps that we can use is a simple foot trap. keeping nails in part of our hunting kit or our survival kit. We can take those nails with our sharpening stone, sharpen the ends, and then finding a piece of board out in the wilderness or at a down hut or dilapidated structure or simply making one with our tools from the materials around us. We can hammer those nails through that board, camouflage that board with charcoal or spray painting it at home and bringing it out to the field. And then using that board, use it along an avenue of approach like a trail, placing it in the ground, most likely to be stepped upon, camouflaging it, and then leaving it for the enemy. Now, speaking of path guards, I'm gonna show you one more path guard that we can use for non-lethal methods, modeled after a Viet Cong technique during the Vietnam War, using a cylinder, a grenade, and some line attached to some anchor points to act as a early warning device or a booby trap. Only in Vietnam they used real grenades and not smoke grenades or non-lethal methods like this, but we're going to use this one as an early detection device. Now we have our cylinder which is just a plastic water bottle which will hold our smoke grenade. We have our grenade inside and then we have our fishing line. We attach our fishing line to the grenade and then we place the grenade inside the cylinder or the plastic bottle that's camouflaged. It has an anchor point or a tie down of 550 cord. We move out to our trail or the site we want to stage this early detection booby trap. We place our cylinder in place and then we tie it off to our anchor point with a 550 cord so it does not move or won't get dragged out by the trip wire. We then take our fishing line from the grenade and from our anchor point and move across the trail to our secondary anchor point and tie the fishing line in place. Once that is in place, prior to arming the trap and camouflaging it, we need to test it to make sure it will work. We walk along the trail acting as an enemy force, hitting the trip wire and the grenade slides out of the cylinder. If it was armed, the grenade would go off at that time with the spoon to the fuse to the actual smoke, setting up our early alert detection. Now, all we have to do is reset the trap, arm the grenade by removing the pin, leaving the spoon in place, placing it in the cylinder, and then we camouflage both the trap and then the anchor point for enemy forces. In Iraq, a simple way to get around trip wires, they were often booby trapped in doors or underpasses with silly string. Spray the silly string along the trail and you'll find the wire. Alright guys, that does it for this video. Very down and dirty on 